So my name is Carrie Cooper. I'm in my final year at York University, finishing my undergrad with a Bachelor of Arts uh, in History. Um, and then in the fall, I'll be starting school at Fanshawe College to do para the paralegal program. Um, I currently, I work in theater. So on top of school, I work at a theater company downtown called the Original Kids Theater Company. And I teach their um, beginner actor program and I also direct. Um, and yeah, and I kind of like on the side, like I'll work in like coffee shops or whatever to like, you know, make money. When were you first diagnosed with ADHD? I think I was like in the generation that was like right before people kind of recognized ADHD, but they recognized something was off. So like growing up, um, I got the comment from all of my teachers like, wow, she's really great. If only she would apply herself or she's really great. If only she would stop talking. Um, and so I used to like hidden in assignments and my teachers would be like, there's something missing. And I'm like, but I don't know what it is. <laughs> um, and it's just cause like I got so, I was so disorganized and stuff. And like in my brain, like I sure, I still struggle getting like all of what's here down to paper. Um, and so I never like went out and actively sought out an ADHD diagnosis. I had struggled with anxiety. And so I was seeing a psychologist or psychiatrist for anxiety. And they were like, hmm. <laughs> there's something else going on here. And I was like, oh, and I was in grade, I want to say grade 10 or 11. Um, yeah. So that kind of was my, when it first happened, then it all kind of clicked and it made sense. Like I have a really big thing with noises. Like I always have, like if someone chews like near me, I literally, like, I can't even describe it. The chew, like it's, it's awful. <laughs> I get so angry. Um, so it made sense definitely like growing up. And then when I got a diagnosis, um, I didn't necessarily start treatment right away. Cause I was like, oh, it's whatever, <laughs> like ADHD. Um, and then it wasn't until this past like two or three years when I was really struggling with school. I was like, again, my professor, she like took me aside. She was like, like what I said before, she's like, you're really smart. You are able to converse really well, but your written work is not matching that. And I don't know why. And I'm like, oh I think I've heard this before I think I get it so it wasn't for the like the last few years that I was like okay let's let's do this and then yeah my friend lent me a book and then yeah game changer what are some of the obstacles you have faced because of your ADHD <laughs> there's so many um <laughs> I guess a big problem that I had was um I guess like having relationships with people and my friends, um, mostly because I struggle so hard to continue my friendships when they're not like right there in front of me. It's so hard for me. And I feel so bad because I think about these people like all the time. Like I think of my one friend who lives in Ottawa, for example, like every time I see pizza, I'm like, oh my gosh, that's when we used to get pizza. And I think of her like often and she's someone who means so much to me and I really respect and look up to her but I struggle so hard to like reach out. Um, and I think that's just like the problem, like one of the problems with ADHD is like, if it's not right there, like a toddler, like it's gone, like it's not there. Um, so that's one of my problems for sure. I think another big problem I, I had was kind of like accepting that I had ADHD, I guess, and like actually asking for help. Um, I didn't want to be put on medication. I was like, oh, okay, it's whatever, it's fine. Um, I didn't want to ask for accommodations. I still really struggle asking for accommodations, like specifically at school, because I'm like nervous of like what my professor will think of me. Like, will they think I'm just doing it for attention when it's like, I'm struggling. <laughs> um, so I think that's like a big thing as well. Um, and again, just like, like, I guess part of like ADHD from what I've researched, is like the whole sensory, like um, problem. And like, I can't eat with other people very often because it the noise just like bothers me like I have to like sometimes go into another room and so just like those type of obstacles like just maintaining friendships and like having the accommodations that I need to succeed have been really really tough after diagnosis did you seek treatment at first I started um I didn't get put onto a medication right away like I didn't get put on a stimulant um I got put on another one and 
it was okay. Like it helped a lot, a little bit in high school. Um, and then I got to university and I was like, eh, I don't need this. Um, and then <laughs> just stopped. Like, I don't know what I was thinking. Um, and then, so I was completely off my ADHD medication, had no treatment, had no accommodations, like nothing. Um, and I, the long story has nothing really to do with ADHD, almost got expelled from York. Uh, so I came back to my hometown for a few years. Um, and then my friend who also has ADHD was like, ah, I think you have this. And I'm like, oh, it was diagnosed in high school actually. Um, and so that's when I kind of started my treatment. Um, I forget what the book was. I, it's like this really good ADHD book, I forget. Um, but I read it and I was like, oh my god that's me like everything to do with like I switched my major a bunch of times I was like struggled with my friendships I struggled with all of these different things and like it's all like it all pointed to ADHD and it was like in this book and I was like felt like I was finally like reading something from someone who like got me and I was like I don't feel so alone um and then so I talked to my doctor and I was like listen remember that time this happened and she was like yes I recall um, and then, so she, we worked out a new medication and so I got, uh, I got put on a stimulant and I felt like I was putting on a pair of glasses, like everything changed. I'm like, what? Um, and so, and then I was able to go back to school. I've gotten like nothing but like eighties, uh, which is crazy. Like this is me growing up and like me just like doing my best, like, ah, uh, you know, C's, C's are pass and stuff. Um, and then, so now I've been like getting almost like straight A's and stuff, which is crazy, but I think it's to do a lot with the help with like me acknowledging my like disability and also this medication has been life-saving. So yeah. How has your experience been in educational spaces? Oh, I absolutely think there needs to be changes. A hundred percent. I think a big problem with people with disabilities or with any sort of learning, um, like any anything that doesn't put you on the same level of like the same bar as everyone else to in order to succeed like we have to almost like beg for to be seen or to get help like it's not like we can just like you know it's like an easy as like oh hey like I my paper I left to the last minute because of all of this stuff and like they usually say no um I think there needs to be policies that are just like blanket policies that are there to support all students because someone with ADHD like like, like, will they ask for accommodations two weeks of beforehand? Probably not. Um, and so I think that a lot of schools have this idea of people with like ADHD and learning disabilities um, is that they come from like people who they might be like 18 or 19 year olds, like who are in their family, like living with their family and they have all these people around to support them to kind of push them to do their work when it's like, that's not the case. And a lot of people with like, for example, like I have to work tons of different jobs in order to pay my rent but then I'm also doing school and it's like the amount of brain power the mental load that you have as a student in order to get these accommodations while you're also trying to survive um not to mention like student mothers who have ADHD and like that mental load so absolutely I think that they need to change absolutely like it's not enough like it's not enough to just be like okay like you can talk to your professors like that's like it should just be a blanket policy like kind of across the board um, for accommodations. I think Western does something really, really great. Um, I don't know if it's hundred percent like true. This is just from what my, my sister told me, but they have like different um, things you can like opt in to like get an extension. You can get like five a semester or something. Um, and something like that would be like really helpful for students who just need more time and they don't have to like go to their professor and be like, I'm so sorry. Like this happened two weeks ago and I'm sorry it's happening again. Um, because it's it makes you feel like a fraud almost and it makes you feel like like I have like I can get do really well in these essays but I need my accommodations and it's like to get these accommodations I have to like like I keep saying beg because that's what it feels like it's like I feel like I'm like please 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 just let me do this so I can get like the marks that I need how has your experience been in the workplace it's really funny because like I've gotten along always with my coworkers and with my boss. Well, for the most part, I guess. Um, uh, it's funny because before I started treatment for ADHD, I was called a hot mess at like most of the places I worked. Um, just because I'd like, I, again, like I didn't realize, like I would like start a 
task and then go to something else and then go to something else and like all of a sudden like everything was everywhere it's like oh there's the carry trail like I was just like you can tell where I was so I mean when I got my diagnosis and I started treatment it was completely different like I felt like a lot less calm like I could like start a project and like finish it um I think a big thing was just like my filter like before treatment I I just said things that I didn't like necessarily like I didn't think it out um and that it's gotten me into trouble a lot actually um but I guess like I'm lucky where I've been working I have like really great like really amazing colleagues and really great like supervisors and things like that so like I'm very very lucky and at the place I work now I've worked at since I was like a kid um so they they know me but I guess like outside of that like working at the places I have like it's been hard because also a lot of them don't understand like ADHD for example like they would say like oh everybody has ADHD and it's like okay (laughs) but I have it and it's hard um So that's kind of been my experience in the workplace. Um, And it sucks because like when I'm good, when I do my job, like I'm really good at it. Like, again, like not where I work now before, like I was always really good at my job, but like there were like the other small things like turning in forms, turning in like the small things like I just didn't do. (laughs) Like, I was just like, I can't, I don't know. And so, yeah, working has been tough for sure. What are some of the biggest misconceptions about ADHD? I think the biggest misconception is that it's, I guess it's, I don't know, like something I hear a lot is like, oh, everybody has ADHD. Everybody who is a little bit hyper has ADHD. And it's like, that's not true. Um, it's actually, I think, hard to get an ADHD diagnosis as an adult now. Um So I don't think that's necessarily true. And then also, I think women with ADHD are often kind of left in the dark because we don't necessarily present as like a little boy with like the little classic little boy ADHD, like the hyper, like zooming around the room. Um, But rather it's like the, it's like inwards, like it's the, the, she has, she could be really smart, but if she just applied herself or took initiative. So I think that's the biggest I guess, misconception is that it doesn't, like, if you have ADHD, like, you're very, very hyper, you're very, like, like, you would look at someone and be like, they have ADHD, but it's actually a lot more, from my experience, like, inward, Um, it's a lot more just, like, like, struggles every day that people wouldn't think that you struggle with, like, for example, like, waking up in the morning and having a routine, I don't know what that's like, could never imagine, like, I've tried to, but it just doesn't work, um, or even something that impacts me like a lot is like being so scared to start something and then I end up just being frozen like for like school for example like I will sit there and like stare at my computer for hours because I'm just so scared and then like once I start I'm like oh that was easy but like I will like take like so long to just like start because I'm nervous about because a it's the time's clicking like I need to get done be like, I'm scared. Like if I'm not perfect, like they're like, I'm a failure kind of thing. It's like a lot of black and white thinking, I think sometimes. Um, and so I think, again, like, I think that's like a big misconception is that how it shows, I guess, in women and how it's not just like being lazy. It's not just being like, oh, you just don't want to do this. It's like, you're, it's different. I actually read a study the other day about how I forget the percentage, but like people who are neurodiv- neurodivergent, like specifically ADHD, as teenagers, like girls will struggle with eating disorders, which makes complete sense. But also, like if we are only focusing on the hyperactive little boy in the third grade classroom has ADHD, that means like these these girls who are like going through like a potentially like life could be life threatening like disorder, like aren't getting the help that they can in order to like combat those like type of. How do you feel ADHD has benefited your life? Okay, so I've heard this question before and I have like very mixed feelings about it because like it's who I am. So like, I'm not gonna, I'm not about to like change me cause I'm, like, I'm a ray of sunshine, but like it has like really impacted my life. It has made it really hard. Um, 
there have been times like I again like I've struggled in school like I took like almost like double the time to finish my degree I have hurt a lot of people in my life like because of me like ADHD was a part of it but because I didn't know like all of these things so for me to be like it's benefited my life and try to make it into like a happy kind of story like feels really fake because like it hasn't (laughs) like I feel like I can only function now because of the treatment I'm on like I can function to the same level as like my peers and stuff um I mean the, it's benefited me in a way that I've gotten to connect with other people with ADHD to be like, ah, oh, you too. Like I get it. Um, and to help work with them. And like, I've even been able to like work with some of my students who have ADHD to like, be like, this is like what I went through. This is what you might go through. Um, but no, I don't, I know this is like kind of like a Debbie downer, but like, I don't want to say that it's like benefited my life when it's really made it hard and really made things like tough for me there are different like there are positive aspects to my life obviously it's just that ADHD kind of has a a tendency to kind of bring them down what do you want people watching to know about your ADHD I guess like if I were to like speak to like different groups of people if I were to speak to like university administrators I'd be like okay do better um because it's not like people need help and people need accommodations especially as things have shifted online Um, I think people with ADHD have really been impacted because it's like when you go into class every week, like you kind of like you're physically there. And so it's like a lot harder um, to finish like work on time. I guess I would want people to understand that women with ADHD, like they exist and it's very different from your like conception of what ADHD is. Um, And I guess like, again, like what you said about the whole superpower, like you can be honest and like understand like it's, it's something that's hard. It's something that impacts you. Um, and you don't have to hide that. You don't have to hide the fact that it's a bad thing because again, kids are going to be uncomfortable. Kids are allowed to feel uncomfortable. Um, and like, sometimes we have to go through these uncomfortable truths in order to get the help that we need so that we can like be able to get eighties in university and be able to go on and have like strong careers and stuff.